And news that I guess isn't really all that shocking, but certainly caught me and I would say most people off guard at least a little bit. Skid Row have announced an amicable split with their fourth and arguably most accepted singer since Sebastian Bach, Eric Gronwall. Alongside the announcement of the departure of Gronwall, the band also announced an upcoming live album to commemorate his time with the band, and most notably announcing that Hailstorm's Lizzie Hale will be fronting the band uh, for a small handful of upcoming shows. All of this, though, begs the question, what's next for Skid Row following these upcoming four shows with Lizzie Hale? Could Sebastian Bach potentially return to the band uh, after, at this point, almost 30 years? Let's discuss. On Wednesday afternoon, it was announced that Skid Row and Eric Gronwall would be parting ways, with the band releasing the following statement online. Today, Skid Row and Eric Gronwall jointly announced that Eric will step down as the vocalist for Skid Row. Longtime friend Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm will be taking over vocal duties for the upcoming scheduled four concerts. Eric has decided that the travel and rigors of the road is not conducive to his overall health and recovery, and wants to focus on a lifestyle that is more amenable for his well-being, healing, and family. Skid Row is proud of what they have created and accomplished with Eric over the past two years, and we wish nothing but the best to him and his health. To celebrate the last two years, the band will be releasing a live album that perfectly captures this moment of time in the band's 35-plus year history to be announced soon. A quote from Gronwall himself then follows, which reads, I got the opportunity to join this incredible band six months after my treatment against leukemia. And one month after that, I was on a world tour with Skid fucking Row. Wow, it was a dream come true. However, it proved challenging touring the world with an impaired immune system, which is a result of my bone marrow transplant. I respect and understand that Skid Row is a touring band, but since I can't prioritize my health being in the band, I have decided that it's better for me to step aside. I love Skid Row. I have nothing but respect for the guys in the band, but I love and respect my health more. I'm getting stronger and healthier every day, but after consulting my doctor, I need to allow myself more time to recover, which I can't do as the lead singer of Skid Row. That's why I have reached the tough decision to move on. I want to thank the guys for this incredible opportunity, and I want to thank all the Skid Row fans who accepted me as the lead singer of this iconic band health first this was then followed by a brief post on lizzie hale's social media where she shared the statement from the band and added the following caption i'm stepping in for a few dates as the lead singer of skid row what an honor to call them my friends and a privilege to be sharing the stage with them eric i wish you all the magic on your next adventure now which leather pants to wear? There's a number of things to unpack here. And to start, I mean, like I mentioned in the intro, I, I think it certainly caught people off guard. It certainly did me. But honestly, when you think about it, this is really like the least surprising thing ever. The band has been out on the road with Buck Cherry for quite some time now. I think they did like three legs of touring in total or something like that. I actually did a review of the show, which I went to last fall, and I'll put a link uh, down in the description. But a ton of those shows got canceled uh, due to Gronwall and, and uh, his illness. I think we all certainly make the joke that Skid Row is wildly incapable of keeping a lead singer. But as mentioned, Eric Gronwall has had many health issues stemming from his leukemia uh, a few years back. So the fact that he was even able to join the band, uh, which is based in the U.S., he's Swedish, which is already difficult enough. But... The fact that he was able to join the band and relentlessly tour with them is quite remarkable. So yes, yet another singer down in Skid Row, but this situation in particular, I mean, it really does make sense and it's completely understandable. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. As far as Lizzie Hale fronting the band for a few shows, truthfully, I could not think of a better fit. Not only is she an incredible powerhouse rock singer, but her name also holds quite a bit of weight, and I, I just don't, I don't see it turning off any potential ticket buyers. Uh, it's really a, a very similar situation, albeit on a way smaller scale, but uh, a similar situation, uh, much along the lines of Axl Rose stepping into ACDC in place of Brian Johnson uh, back in 2016. If you're unfamiliar, Hailstorm also released a cover of Slave to the Grind back in 2011, and honestly, if nothing else, proves that she is way more than capable of singing this stuff. 
And not to mention, a female-fronted skid row is most certainly a very interesting angle, uh, quite the curveball. So, I don't know, I think plenty of people will want to see it. And given that she's only appearing with them for four shows, uh, at least four shows as of now, we'll see if any more get added, but I doubt that. But anyways, given that it's only a handful of shows, I would not be shocked to see both Skid Row and Hailstorm diehards traveling uh, to see these shows happen. <laughs> There's two major questions left here, though, which tie in together. What will Skid Row do in the future post Lizzie, and will Sebastian Bach return to the fold? Beginning with what the future of the band could look like, they do kind of find themselves in an interesting predicament. Of course, everyone, myself included, would love to see Skid Row uh, reunite with Sebastian Bach, but Eric Gronwall was arguably the most accepted singer that the band has had, uh, in the post-Bach era. Since Bach was out of the band in 1996, they've had Johnny Solinger, rest in peace, uh, who was a good singer, and they put out some okay stuff with him before he got fired over the fucking phone back in 2015, which, I mean, after almost 20 years in the, uh, in the band, what a shitty way to get fired. Uh, but anyways, he was then replaced by Tony Harnell from TNT for like literally five fucking minutes uh, and then they had uh, ZP from Dragon Force, with whom they actually started working on this last record, The Gang's All Here With, before eventually replacing him with Eric Gronwall uh, in the midst of making that album. I remember Skid Row coming around where I live, maybe like 10 years ago or something. Uh, this was when Johnny Solinger was still fronting the band. And they were playing in a 600 cap room, and I know for a fact that the show did not sell well. I mean, I'm talking like, I don't even think the show sold 300 tickets, was not even 50% sold. Fast forward to the band hiring Eric Gronwall, and not only do they start packing out theaters, which they could have never done 10 years ago uh, in, in a majority of markets, but they also released the Gangs All Here album, which is just fucking phenomenal. Goddamn, what a great album. Very, very well received. That dude certainly re-energized the band, or resurrected if you will uh, to some extent pun intended in all seriousness though had it not been for Gronwall, i mean who knows where skid row would be today look i'm a huge 80s guy but a ton of those bands great white slider whoever they're all very lumped in together with these constant you know, casino packages and doing these double bills at, at county fairs whatever nothing nothing against that stuff whatsoever but Skid Row, especially in recent years with Eric Gronwall in the band, they've largely been able to stay a cut above all of that. And uh, I mean, I feel that Eric plays a huge role in that. In terms of moving forward though, obviously the hope from everyone and honestly the thing that they should do is bring Sebastian Bach back into the fold, which is certainly uh, something that Bach himself has rallied for many, many times over the years feels like he says it at least once uh, once a month on X or Twitter or whatever. Uh, and even though it supposedly uh, came pretty close to happening uh, a time or two over the years, the other uh, original members of the band have more or less always been opposed to it. Not to mention, the timing of all of this doesn't exactly work out great as Bach is getting ready to release a new solo album uh, following these two recent singles that he's released, which by the way, are fucking fantastic if you haven't heard them yet, uh, on, top of an, uh, on top of an upcoming lengthy headline tour. So the timing doesn't necessarily work out. But that being said, I mean, look at Kerry King. Dude finally reveals his band after years of anticipation, like five years, uh, four and a half, five years after Slayer says farewell, releases a single, announces a record, uh, announces a, a, a tour this summer supporting Lamb of God and Mastodon. And then the Slayer quote unquote reunion or whatever you want to call it. It's only like three shows right now. Uh, but that thing gets announced essentially at the exact same time that Carrie's uh, solo stuff gets announced. So uh, who really knows anymore? N none of this shit ever makes any sense at all. Obviously, there's a ton of tension between Bach and his former bandmates. So should he wind up uh, rejoining? Might not be the easiest thing in the world for those guys to get in a room together and, and find a way to get along. And it could very well implode before it even gets off the ground, which is kind of sound uh, kind of sounds like what's happened uh, in previous attempts to get him back into the band. But with him coming back brings, I mean, mega, mega huge offers from promoters 
And I guarantee you that they could afford uh, to all travel uh, separately and completely avoid each other other than the 90 minutes to two hours they got to be on stage. I mean, look at a band like Motley Crue. They all travel separately. And no, uh, you know, we're not talking quite the same level. Skid Row with Sebastian Bach would be huge, but still not that huge. Uh, but still, they could afford it. And given how much money uh, the box return to the band would bring, I, I got to say, I, I and when you consider his eagerness to do it, I'm a little surprised that it hasn't already happened yet. But I guess, if nothing else, props to Snake, Rachel, and Scotty for sticking to their guns, uh, or big guns, if you will. Another interesting scenario that isn't exactly, uh, it's not exactly ideal, but it could work, and better than nothing, is something similar to what Dawkins has done with George Lynch over the last few years. Dawkins still does a vast majority of their shows, of course, without uh, George Lynch, John Levin's uh, very much still in the band. But every once in a while, maybe a few times a year, a handful of docking shows will pop up. Maybe Lynch Mob is opening or whatever. And then at the end of uh, docking set, George Lynch will come out and do like two or three songs to close out the show uh, with docking. That way, both parties can still do their own thing. They're not 100% completely attached to the, uh, at the hip to each other. Again, not exactly an ideal scenario, but... Something would be better than nothing. If they go the route of someone other than Bach, I honestly don't even know what they could do unless they get extremely lucky again uh, and find another Eric Gronwall, but that's, I don't know, that's a, a pretty slim chance in my opinion. Yes, there are a billion fantastic singers on the planet, but I don't know, there was just a certain level of chemistry between Gronwall and the rest of the guys in the band that especially at this point in their career, in 2024, it's just going to be tough to match that. I mean, the fact that they brought Eric into the band and, and kind of had this uh, the, the renewed interest in them uh, is, is already incredible. It would be insane if it could happen again. Not saying it can't, but it would just be uh, almost impossible in my opinion. Especially considering that the next singer will be their fifth singer since Sebastian Bach, if they go that route. They could try to find someone who has a name to do it, but the likelihood of finding someone with a big enough name to sell tickets, uh, who's, who's willing and available uh, to join Skid Row as a permanent and full-time member, I mean, I've, I don't know, it's a pretty slim chance. I don't know that I see it happening. It really would have to be the, the right person and a big name, arguably a bigger name than Skid Row, uh, which I, you know, I don't know if I see that happening. On the flip side, though, Lizzie Hale is such a great fit that maybe they should try to go that route instead and find a female replacement for Gronwall. I'm mean, sure it might piss off some diehards, but I think it could work well. Uh, and if it was uh, if it was done well enough, I think it would be unique enough to keep them somewhat relevant, depending on how it's done and depending on how they do it. But to me, uh, getting a, a female singer might be the way to go. There were rumors a few years back that Fear Factory was going to bring in a female singer uh, before they ended up bringing in Milo, which is definitely a, you know an interesting idea from out of left field, but I thought it was interesting, and at the very least, it could have been cool. Regardless, I know I'm not alone when I say that my personal preference uh, would be to obviously bring Sebastian Bach back into the fold, but as much as I want that to happen, I just can't say that I see that becoming a reality. There's so much turmoil there. There's so much tension. Uh, and obviously, a, a number of previous attempts have been made to no avail. So it is likely at least a little bit of wishful thinking, but only time will tell. It is also entirely possible that uh, Bach has reached the point where he's just like, you know what? Fuck you. I tried for years. I'm over it. I got my own thing. I'm doing just fine on my own. I, I don't need you anymore. But I don't know, given his tenacity over the years and how much he wants to do this, uh, I, I doubt that's the case, but I guess we'll see. All right, though, I got to run. My fiance is waiting to have a piece of me, and I can guarantee you that we will be making a mess, so I got to go. But thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you next time.